whisky.de. Treffpunkt Feiner Geister. Hallo und herzlich willkommen bei whisky.de, dem Treffpunkt Feiner Geister. Heute bin ich am Südende von Isla und zwar bei Lafroig, wie man hinter mir sehen kann. Lafroig ist eine der wenigen Brennereien, die noch ihr eigenes Malz melzen. Das werden wir uns heute mal anschauen und außerdem, wie Lafroig Whisky aus diesem Malz hergestellt wird. Der erste Schritt bei Lafroig ist das Melzen. Und zum Melzen werden erstmal die ganzen, äh, wird das wie die Gerste eingeweicht. Hier hinter mir sind die Einweichbehälter, in denen dann die Gerste zwei Tage lang eingeweicht wird mit, mit dem guten Quellwasser, das Lafroig auch für die Destillation benutzt. Und ähm, das wird dann hier abgefüllt in die, diesen Wagen hier, dann nach vorne gebracht und dann so ausgebreitet, dass es schön äh, weit verteilt ist. Und in den nächsten sechs Tagen fängt das Ganze dann zu keimen an und die äh, Gerste transformiert sich dann und es entsteht Zucker in diesem Malz. Äh, ja, und danach geht es dann in den Kiln zur Trocknung. Ungefähr 20 Prozent des Malzes, das Lafroig äh, für die Produktion verwendet, wird auf vier Malting Floors in der Brennerei gemacht. Der Rest kommt aus Großmelzereien. So, und so äh, wendet man das Malz. Und es, gibt, es gibt auch noch eine, noch eine ältere Methode, wie man das Ganze wendet, vor dem Flug, indem man es einfach so hoch wirft und wendet. Nachdem das Malz fertig gemälzt wurde, kommt es in den Killen. Und in dem Killen hat es dann so hier kleine ja, Wurzeln schon und äh, wird nun getrocknet. Die ersten 15 Stunden sind mit äh, Rauch, also mit Torfrauch. Und wenn man es dann probiert, dann mh, schmeckt das schon ziemlich rauchig. Die nächsten 15 Stunden sind dann nur noch über trockener Luft, um das Ganze dann äh, so trocken zu machen, dass es gut lagerbar ist und in der weiteren Produktionskette verwendbar ist. Um den, das Torfgehalt, um den Torfgehalt einzustellen, ähm, nimmt man dann noch verschiedene äh, Mischungen aus dem Malz von Port Allen und dem hier. Wenn man hier kriegt man so roundabout 40 bis 60 ppm raus. Kommt sehr darauf an, wie feucht das Malz noch ist, ähm, wie feucht der, der Peat unten ist und andere Faktoren. Ja, um diesen Rauch, den wir im, auf der Trocknungsfläche haben, brauchen wir natürlich den Peat, der in diesem Kiln verbrannt wird. Und Peat, auf Deutsch Torf, kann man sehen. Hier gibt es einmal den, den an der Oberfläche, den, den Torf, und dann noch der etwas tiefer ist. Und da sieht man, es gibt Unterschiede bei, Peat, äh, bei Torf. Und zwar haben wir hier bei den Oberflächen mehr, ja, mehr Pflanzenreste. Man sieht, sieht, dass die Wurzeln der Pflanzen da sind und der untere ist schon stärker äh, komprimiert. Und das ist dann, geht dann schon etwas mehr in Richtung Kohle. Und mit dem Naturprodukt werden hier ungefähr zwei Tonnen in diesen Ofen befüllt. Und das Wichtige daran ist, dass man keine bis wenige Flammen hat und dieser Rauch dann aufsteigt und möglichst viel Rauch entsteht. Und jetzt schaufe ich mal ein bisschen was rein. Ja, der Torf wird zweimal im, äh, einmal im Jahr gestochen und da ist es wichtig, dass man die, ja, das Wetter, dass das Wetter stimmt, dass nicht zu viel regnet, dass nicht zu wenig regnet, dass der Torf ein wenig feucht ist und wenn man ihn dann sticht, der so eine, so eine Konsistenz ungefähr wie Butter, wurde mir erzählt. Und die äh, richtet man dann auf und die werden in der Sonne getrocknet. Da bildet sich dann eine Haut und innen drin ist dann äh, die Feuchtigkeit eingeschlossen, die wir dann hier äh, im Ofen brauchen, damit genügend Rauch entsteht. Das stark getäufte Malz wird erst gemahlen und dann zusammen mit frischem Quellwasser hier in der neuen äh, rostfreien Stahl Lordertan von Lafroig zu Mesh verwandelt. Und jetzt schauen wir mal rein. Das Besondere an einer Lordertan ist, dass immer wieder frisches, neues, heißes Wasser auf den äh, Gerstenbrei äh, getröpfelt wird, 
so dass das Maximum aus dem Gerstenbrei herausgewaschen wird und wir dann später viel zum Fermentieren für unseren Whisky haben. Wenn das dreimal ausgewaschen wurde, bleibt ein stark ballaststoffhaltiger und proteinhaltiger Rest übrig und das ist dann das Draft. Der Draft wird dann abtransportiert und an Farmer verkauft, die das dann als Futter für ihre Kühe benutzen. Hinter mir ist einer der sieben Washbags. Sie haben eine Kapazität von 52.000 Litern und sind aus rostfreiem Stahl. Ungefähr in den 90ern hat Lafroy seine hölzernen, alten, traditionellen Washbacks durch diese neuen rostfreien Stahl-Washbacks abgelöst. Die Mesh dann mit ihren 5,5 Tonnen äh, Getreide braucht ungefähr zweieinhalb Mesh-Durchgänge, bis einer dieser Washbacks befüllt wird. Nachdem das Ganze dann durchfermentiert ist, geht es ab in die Destillation. Ich befinde mich nun im Brennhaus von Lafroig und neben mir sind die Wash Stills. Die Wash Stills sind mit dem Wash befüllt oder auch Bier genannt und es hat ungefähr 8% Alkohol. Nachdem äh, das angefangen hat zu, äh, zu kochen, kommen wir auf ungefähr 34% Alkohol raus. Das äh, geht dann langsam über die Destillation in der Wash Still runter und wir enden irgendwo so bei 20. Die Spirit Still ist etwas kleiner, hat hier eine Einschnürung und der Leinarm, der steigt an. Das heißt, alles, was im Leinarm kondensiert oder um das Constricting Piece, weil es hier viele Wirbel gibt, ähm, fließt wieder zurück in den Topf und wird wieder destilliert. Ähm, ja. Die meisten drei der vier Spirit Stills sind kleiner, haben 4700 Liter Inhalt. Die letzte der Spirit Stills ist 9400 Liter groß. Das ist der, die doppelte Menge und das gibt uns so ein bisschen asymmetrischen Aufbau. Wir haben drei Wash Stills, vier Spirit Stills, wobei eine größer ist. Ähm, so war es halt bis jetzt immer bei Lafroig und so wird es auch bleiben. Denn das ist, was Lafroig in ihrem Geschmack ausmacht. Die Warehouses von Lafroig sind leider nicht öffentlich zugänglich, aber hinter mir sieht man dann schon, wie die Fässer gelagert werden und die sind in der alten traditionellen Weise in drei Lagen übereinander gelagert, direkt am Meer und dieses Lagerhaus hier ist dreistöckig, also haben wir insgesamt neun Reihen den Whisky hoch und der Boden ist auch offen und das ist die traditionelle Art und Weise, wie man Whisky lagert. Das ist jetzt eins der Lafroig Warehouses. Wenn man die Straße noch 50 Meter nach oben geht, dann findet man noch weitere Warehouses. Das sind dann Stahlgebäude mit Stahlständern drin, in denen dann die Fässer etwas ökonomischer lagern können. Aber das Besondere bei Lafroig ist, dass so ziemlich jedes Fass auf Eila gelagert wird. Außer vielleicht so das ein oder andere besondere Fass, das dann irgendwo mit anderen Destillerien getauscht wird oder sonstige spezielle Fässer, die einen anderen Zweck haben. Außerdem haben wir hier noch vorne eins der Fässer, das äh, Prinz Charles unterschrieben hat, was dann immer ähm, in irgendwelche wohltätigen Zwecke gespendet wird, was da äh, verkauft wurde. Ja, das war jetzt die Distillerie Tour und jetzt geht es noch um ein kleines Tasting. So, I'm sitting here with John Campbell and we're doing a tasting. So, sure. you're the master distiller of La, La, Lafroig? That's correct. Yep. And sure. thank you very much for having us. No, well, thanks very much for coming. Uh, we've got four whiskies we're going to taste. Uh, so, so what are we having? Well, there's, you've got 10. Uh, select 10, 15 and 21-year-old Lafroig. So, lots of different flavours, lots of different uh, age groups and taste profiles. So... Uh, a good range to taste. Okay, let's just dive right in. I got so some questions select, in between there. Yep, select. Uh, I'm assuming we're going from left to right here. Okay. Select is the left hand side one. It's a good one to start with as well. Select mm -hmm. is a brand new Lafroig or one of the newest Lafroigs in the core range. It was introduced uh, about two years ago now mm -hmm. and it's the Friends of Lafroig, the, the club we've got. Uh, there's oh, yeah. 700,000 members. They helped create the, or they chose the winning recipe and they chose the name of the brand as well. So 
when we were doing this, uh, I produced six recipes, mm-hmm. and uh, they chose the winning recipe, and we chose lots of different names uh, from all around the world, and Select was the winner. Uh, what we're doing with Select, we're mixing uh, five different styles of Laphroaig together, uh, all different ages as well, uh, so it is a, a non-age statement product. Uh, and it, what we're trying to do, we're trying to get a, an easier introduction into the brand. So if maybe select as a brand for people that have never tasted Laphroaig before. Mm-hmm. So the purists, they know Laphroaig, they don't need to know select kind of thing. It's, it's more about bringing people into Laphroaig that don't know Laphroaig. So what you're going to find, there's, uh, there's first fill bourbons as normal, the normal recipe for Laphroaig. We've got some quarter cask uh, matured Laphroaig in this. We've got some straight European oak, some straight American oak, and uh, we've got some Pedro Jimenez matured. When you say straight uh, oak, you mean like fresh wood? Yes, fresh wood, not used in the bourbon or the sherry Ah, industry at all. Virgin oak cask. Yep, virgin oak. Mm -hmm. So So most of the the ex-bourbon are from... Maker's Mark. Maker's Mark. Yep. So okay. that's a relationship we've had now for about 30 years. We've had that relationship. Mm-hmm. So what's going to happen? This is the way Ian Hunter would have made his Laphroaig in the early 1900s. He would have mixed different cask styles together to produce a Laphroaig. The, the great thing about drinking old Laphroaigs is that none of, no two taste the same, <laughs> which okay. is an adventure. What we're trying to do nowadays is a very different process. We're trying to produce exactly the same flavour and style every single time. Whereas when Ian Hunter was creating those Laphroaigs, he didn't have casks coming from Maker's Mark all the time, for example. He just mm. used to have to use the barrels that were available. So what that means is he had to create different recipes each single time. So uh, it was one of the things that led to the, the next brand, the 10-year-old being created in the 1940s. But with Select, before that, we thought we'd recreate what he used to do. So, what you're going to find, Select's more approachable because of the five different styles of casks. Uh, and what's going to happen is, with all of these different styles, you think there's going to be, the peat is going to be less obvious in this one. Now, there's the same amount of peat in all the Freugs, so you look but we're just, ca- just different cask styles and different ages. It'll feel different on the palate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're looking at like 45 or, or higher? 40% alcohol, this one. No, I mean uh, at the PPM level, we are looking at 45 yes, or... Yes, in the malt. In the malt. In the malt, yep. Yeah. Uh, and it just depends on your process as to how much you get in the liquid as well. Each distillery processes malt different ways. They've got different cuts in the stills as well. So depending on how you process and your cuts will depend how much you get in the liquid. So okay. you can... So why am I telling you this? Because you can have a... A really heavily peated malt, but not so much in the liquid because of the way they process it. So yeah, it depends on how much reflux and cuts in the stills, cuts everything. And yeah. So uh, mm. Laphroaig has a really uh, good ratio, so we get less losses in the phenol. So we keep a high phenol level in the spirit. Okay. Let's so see. yes, let's uh, go try. Yeah, we should. Let's lunch. Let's lunch. So we select, you get some of that sweetness up front. It's subtle, you get some of these wood elements coming through. There's a, a band of spiciness right in the middle. But then the licorice ashy finish comes through at the end. Not so lingering as a normal Laphroaig as well. So it's, it is, say it's more approachable, it's more subtle. And that's because of the different cask styles. There's a creaminess to this one as well with a Pedro Jimenez that just gives it that extra viscosity. It's all naturally coloured, uh, non-coloured, uh, and non-chill filtered as well. Mm. Yeah, peat level. I would have said from the smell, there is for me there is a lot of peat in there. Mm. When I when I tasted it, it was not that dominant. No, and um, sometimes Laphroaig's like that. You get uh, elements where you just oh, it's it's like a wolf in sheep's clothing. Sometimes you can <laughs> nose it and smell it, and you're not ready for what you're about to get in your mouth. Or it works the other way around sometimes. Mm-hmm. It's, you think, oh, this is going to be quite powerful, but it actually isn't. It can be soft and gentle in the palate as well. 
I'm not sure how that works. Normally, Le Frog's the other way around. You get a nice, kind of soft, round nose, but it, it punches you in the mouth when you drink it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, one question. Um, yes? Y you've been awarded a royal warrant from Prince Charles, right? Yes, that's um, correct. So, would you call yourself Royal Lafroig? <laughs> like Royal no, Loch Naga, they did no, it? That's, and... No, there's, 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 two different, there's two different parts to that. So, okay. there's by royal appointment, which is Royal Loch Nagar. Okay. And a royal warrant means you supply the royal household. Oh, okay. So, what did you get? Royal appointment. Royal appointment. So, we supply the royal household. We're the only single malt with a royal warrant. Ah, so so the uh, if I go to Buckingham Palace, I will not see any whiskey but Lafroig or. Eh, well, no, for Prince Charles. For oh, Prince Charles, only ah, Prince Charles. That's why you see the three feathers in the top, the fleur de lis. So it's for Prince Charles. So. Ah, okay, that's that's how it works. So yeah. so you couldn't even call yourself Royal uh, Lafroig. No, well, you could if they gave you by a royal appointment. So, right, Royal Loch Nagar is by royal appointment because it's right next to where they base themselves in, uh, in Braemar, mm -hmm. but it, they don't actually give whiskey to the royal household. It's just a historical thing that gets passed ah, it. Okay. Mm, okay. <laughs> Didn't S know that. Slight difference. Slight <laughs> difference. But, so we're the only single malt that supplies any household. Ah, okay. Good. So um, that was the non-age statement? Yep. What's, what else Number do Number two is 10 year old. 10 year I old. think when you're doing a Lafroy tasting, it's really always good to do 10 because it just gives you a, a line in the sand. So Ian Hunter was, he was a bit frustrated about having to mix different casks together, like the select recipe. So what he did, he thought, well, I'm just going to get one single cask. I'm going to get the best possible cask I can get, and I'm going to complete the Laphroaig recipe. He was happy with the liquid that was coming off the stills. He just didn't have the cask to put it to sleep and to come back to. Uh, and so uh, after Prohibition ended in 1932, uh, they got the casks uh, starting to come through from the bourbon industry probably in the late 30s early 1940s uh, and this was the he travelled a lot through America at this time uh, and into the he went, went to the rum plants in Jamaica as well and just trying to find this cask that would complete the jigsaw if you like of his recipe so he found the bourbon barrel got that uh, and started, probably Lafroy would have been one of the first uh, distilleries in the Scotch whisky industry to start using bourbon barrels for its finish. Mm -hmm. uh, so this was the final piece and since then uh, Lafroy's used uh, bourbon barrels of one kind or another for the single malt. Mm -hmm. uh, and a combination, even I would say up until the 60s, maybe 70s, and then it, was, it, was, it became more and more and more and then into the 80s, this was the... That was the fine, hundred percent like we are today. Mm -hmm. That's some great stuff here. Is I'm I'm still I'm still struggling a bit with the peat, but mm -hmm. I'm getting behind that. No. One of the one of the great things about coming to Lafroy is the fact that you, you, the peat is very obvious. If you're sitting in your house in Germany, you're just the peat will be very very obvious. But once you come to Lafroy and you've been round the distillery, sometimes you can throw it to the back of your mind a wee bit easier and then get into the layers. Mm -hmm. Because one of the big things about Lefroy is the layers of flavour that you do get. So, as much as Lefroy is peaty, you get some of that sweetness coming through. You get some of the vanilla flavours from the American oak. You also get some of the sugars coming through as well. Lefroy is a really sweet, fruity, characterful spirit off the stills. Uh, if you've seen the stills, they're some of the smallest in the whisky industry, just above mm. the, the legal limit. Uh, so with that, we do get a lot of reflux and a lot of fruit flavours coming through as well. Uh, so this does come through and into the liquid as well. Uh, the other things that you get with Lefroy, the peatiness as well. The peatiness is different on Isla uh, compared to mainland Scotland. So you do get some of these kind of earthy, iodine, medicinal type flavours. You've got the cask flavours, you've got the fruity flavours coming through from the stills as well. So when you add all of these together, and in the maturation you start to get these floral notes coming through, you get lots of different layers and flavours coming through with the Lefroy. And the 10 does that. Yeah, I kind of uh, feel to get a bit of that bourbon flavour now. Mm -hmm. Just but up front, just for, quick. For me, I'm, I'm with, a, with a peaty whiskey. I had a bit of peaty whiskey before, but I'm... Not the peat head. 
Yeah, no, and, no, and it's just different levels as well. Mm-hmm. As you so, go through these four whiskies, even from Laphroaig, like, you'll find they all have different peat f- flavour profiles, but they all have the same amount of peat in them, but just with, through different cask ages, different cask samples, the peatiness will feel more or less. Mm, so. Yeah, I had uh, the Black Bomber. Obviously, Bomber has peat as well, but Black Bomber didn't have that much No, peat and you'll find... just that too old for that. Well, what you find is there's two things for that. Uh, as whiskies uh, get older, they generally produce... You get chemical reactions, oxidisation, and that yeah. produces different flavours. Uh, the, with the air moving out the, mm-hmm. in the cask, uh, what happens as well is if you go back 40, 50 years, the Isla peated malts wouldn't have been too heavy peated either. Oh, no. is, it, is it because of different, con- uh, different style of peating the malt? Yeah, no, just more peat in them nowadays. And like back in the, even in the 60s, they would have mixed unpeated spirit with peated spirit and blended, mm-hmm. different casks. There was lots of combinations. That's why up until the 80s or 90s, the consistency wasn't the same. I have to say, this reminds me a lot of, uh, of the mold that I had from the kiln. I tried from some from the kiln and it just really reminds me of the yeah, kiln. Yeah, no, you do get a lot of that. And that's, mm. if you were sitting at, say, if you were sitting at home in Germany, all you would get was peat. But because you can push these layers mm. to the back, you'll get a lot of the, the depth coming through. You get a bit of that sweetness. Yeah. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Nice. Sweetness first, moving into the middle of the tongue, mm. becoming nice and uh, spicy, out to the edges, a, a kind of dry, salty flavour, and then in the back of your tongue, licorice root, all these peaty flavours, a like, yeah, bit of dark chocolate. Oh, uh, there's a lot going on. Now that's a bit more obvious for me. Mm. Yeah, yeah mouth watering, yep. mm. and sweetness, and yeah, peaty flavours. Yeah, I would even say, yeah, that's licorice. I haven't tasted licorice before yet. <laughs> it's like a bitter dark chocolate <laughs> as well. So it's like a really heavy cocoa chocolate as well. That's what licorice feels like. And yeah. we, we do keep a lot of it down in the visitor centre so we can tell people. It's, and it's like licorice root. It's not like the licorice, it's sweet licorice. Yeah, it's not. Look, luckily it's not that uh, dominant because I, the pure licorice is a bit too hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's okay. And that's... That's the good thing about drinking whiskey. Everyone feels what they feel, and the exchange is a very positive mm-hmm. thing as well. So, I can tell you what I'm feeling. You <laughs> might not get it, and mm-hmm. you can tell me what you're feeling, and I'll understand it. There's no rights or no wrongs with drinking whiskey, and one of the great things about drinking whiskey is having the confidence to be able to express yourself to say what you're feeling, because mm-hmm. people are interested in what you're feeling and how they're feeling, and the exchange. Yeah, it's it's, it's amazing how it. When you start to drink it, it's a bit sharp for me. Mm-hmm. It starts sharp and then rounds off in sweetness and stuff. Mm. This one does linger and linger <laughs> as well. <laughs> no. And it's not so ashy, this one, not so dry. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I like it. Mm-hmm. So I did a bit of digging in the history yes. of Lafroy, and uh, there was a time when uh, your master distiller died, and someone from Lagavulin helped out for yeah, I that's think, right. a couple of years. That's right, no, because uh, uh, Dougald wasn't of age. So oh, Donald, right. Donald died after falling into a vat of the remnant from the first distillation. Uh, so he basically boiled to death. Uh, oh. So not very good. Uh, oh. But Dougald was an age, his son. So uh, the Mackies at Lagavulin, or Lagavulin distillery, then distributed and ran Lafroy for a few years. Uh, did until, that have any influence on you? Like. Uh, did- I would imagine they would have changed things slightly. Uh, they would have uh, done things. It was selling of the liquid so much. It wasn't the producing, it was the oh, selling. Okay. So. And the, the ownership of the distillery under uh, their command. So uh, until the Dougal became of age. So, yep. So when he became of age, he. Then he could take over the business and take and care of things the way he wanted to do it. Yep. Run the business. Okay. So. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we, we found out that yeah, you have different big global companies competing with each other on the Isla, but we found out you have an agreement with Port Ellen that uh, yeah. when things get bad, everybody gets some malt. Is, is there like a really big community on Isla? Yeah, it's, it's a big family. It's, it's, a, it's very much a community. Uh, I would say it's different to a lot of other places as well. Uh, it's, a, it's not a bad day today, it's nice and mild, it's, but... Equally, 
when your winter comes, you get a lot of storms coming through this place, and oh, all, okay. we are all going to have to rely on each other at some point. Uh, so yes, on the island is very much a family and a community, and we all look out for each other. We all help each other. Uh, no, I it's you, you, Lefroy comes first for me, mm-hmm. but then Isla, and oh. then Scotland. So we all help each other, out and we all have to keep a uh, consideration of each other's distilleries because it's it's very important for the island that. Lefroy does well, but equally Lagavulin or Arbeg, they're doing well as well. So yeah, it pushes the brand. You have the brand the Scotch, island, you have yeah. Isla Whiskey, so and you have Lefroy as a yes. brand. But so I've seen that it's just not that far away. There is a little no. walkway going down. No, so so yeah, you can really the walk there. Two miles between the three of us. Two miles. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. Yeah. So what's the third one? So the third one is uh, 15, and this was a brand we did have uh, between the early 1990s and 2008. And so it was replaced by the 18-year-old, uh, and the 18-year-old was just to get things non-chill filtered and non-coloured. Uh, but there was a wee trigger in the, the Friends of Lefroy that uh, called Nostalgia. Mm-hmm. And so they wanted the brand to come back maybe from about 2012, 2013 on. And so uh, this was the first brand that we launched in our bicentenary year. We're 200 years old this year. Uh, so we thought the, the the noise for this was strong. So we decided mm-hmm. to bring it back and we produced it exactly the same way as we did the old 15. Now it's not the same flavoured profile. Uh, there was 100,000 bottles of this produced. and. What happens with Lefroy when it goes into teenage years, uh, so the 15 would be a classic example of this, you start to get a different fruity flavour coming through. Mm-hmm. So the peat takes a wee step back again, the fruity flavours start to come forward. This one's going to have a lot of floral in it. It's going to be quite minty, quite fresh, quite floral, fruity, good balance in this one. Uh, Pete's still there as well. When you nose it, I mean, the first thing you get is oh. a, a, that, that sweet fruitiness coming through. The, so, the, like, I get the mintiness, definitely. Yeah, there is a really minty fresh, which is not like a Lefroy. Lefroy's normally not like that, but just because this is probably a limited batch, and 100,000 bottles is a, is a lot of whiskey, but it's a limited batch for us. Uh, is this any different? I, I don't feel the... Yeah, much more fragrant this the, one than the, the fifth. The is, isn't that dominant for me. This no, time. no, no, what you're going to find <sighs> yeah, with the last two... On the nose, the peat is not dominant, but you will absolutely taste it on the bottle. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> so this one's bottled at 43% alcohol, which is, again, the original stress that the 15 was bottled at. What you're going to find with this one, when you taste this one, it's going to flow. So you're going to get all these fruity flavours at the beginning, and then you're going to move, and you're going to get a wee bit of spiciness, and it's just going to go from the front of your tongue all the way to the back, and you're going to end with the peaty kind of licorice root flavours as well. But it's just going to flow... A lot of times Lefroy comes in stages, but this one's just going to flow and it's just going to wash your mouth with all of these flavours and end up in the back with the peatiness. So. I can't quite identify the, the fruits. It's, I would say it's a mixture between apple and pear for me. Yeah, you, I do get pear absolutely in this one and I get apricots as well. Apricots, okay. But everyone's different. There's yeah. no rights, no wrongs. No wrongs. It's no, just the flavours I, I associate. The and again... This one's really floral, very floral, very fragrant as well. And then the mint at the end is very strong, so it's okay. lunch. Lunch. Initially a wee bit thinner, mm. but then the sweetness comes through. You get that band right across the middle of your tongue, that depth, and then the peatiness slowly, mm. slowly evolves and comes through. So, we bit of dryness. This mm. one is going to last for a, quite a long time. Quite citrusy at the back end, but not not too orangey. More a kind of lemony, fresh one as well. Not so earthy and so heavy, this one. Quite floral, quite fragrant, quite delicate, but definitely a Lefroy, just different. It's 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 strange how the, the peat stays and it's not that for me it's not that dominant. Um, no 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 it's just like mm, it, it kind of pulls everything together. Yeah, pulls everything together and you have that sweetness and complexity. Mm, yeah, I really like it. Fifteen years is good. 
So um, from our viewers and uh, we have a bit of concern. Now we have the the select yep. and the, what is it? The triple wood and the quarter cars. Yep. They're all non-age statement. Uh, is the 10 year old uh, continuing or is, is uh, the no age statement pushing it out? So, no, so no. what can we expect for the future? Is the well, one of the things about Lefroy is they've mm -hmm. never replaced an age statement with a non age statement. So we oh. don't do that. We just try and produce different flavours. So quarter cask would have been one of the first non age statements released in the Scottish whisky industry in mm -hmm. 2004. Uh, Ten year old will never change. That's the heart of the brand. That is where everyone ends up. It's the one you see in all the back bars all around the world. Mm -hmm. So no, no, no. Ten year old will always be ten year old, and that's ah, okay. the heart of Lefroy. We just try and offer different looks at Lefroy. Mm -hmm. We test it on the friends of Lefroy first, and if they like it and they uh, name it, they then they'll will release it. If they don't like it, it doesn't get released. Uh, and the purpose is not to put out age statements. It's to it's to give people more options and more choices. So uh, no, we've never replaced an age statement with okay. a age. So it's not that's not the purpose. It's to just show a different angle to Lefroy. Okay. So but I think global demand is rising. Yeah, no, very high. Very high. So um, how are you keeping up uh, I've, I've asked one of your distillers uh, you're running twenty 21 shifts a week? Yeah, flat out, 24-7. 24-7, so yeah. uh, any plans for expansion? Yes, no, absolutely, we're looking at expansion plans. Uh, we are reviewing all that uh, just now. Uh, we, we, we do, and the other thing as well, we do produce non-age statements, but we still do not involve ourselves in countries like China. We, it is slowly growing in India, but not much. Nothing in Brazil or Russia, very, very little. So mm -hmm. the growing economies are kept back because countries like Germany, for example, it will become our second biggest market this year. Yeah. Uh, and huge growth over the last 10 years in Germany. Massive growth. You couldn't have predicted. Uh, so we need to keep Germany supplied rather than spreading ourselves too thin. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the countries that... I would say Lefroy's philosophy is to keep growing the countries that can grow, and we've got the the heritage and the background in. Uh, we won't produce non-age statements just so we can be everywhere. That's okay. not Lefroy's philosophy. We will produce non-age statements to interest people, and if they don't like it, it won't last. Mm. It's very straightforward. So Lefroy's a very like I think mm. the brand and the philosophy is very straightforward, just like the whiskey. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at, we're we looking at expansion like mirroring, like like make a smart and then just say, okay, we want to keep everything the same, so we just do what, uh, <laughs> another mirror. Well, Lefroy, as you know, Lefroy is a very different uh, production process to most other distilleries in the Scotch whisky industry. So absolutely, my job's not to change things. <laughs> okay. My job is to keep things the same and to try and improve consistency and quality if we can. Keep the tradition running. Absolutely. But up the, the capacity that's that's the, the okay. game yeah. that's that's what i think what our community wants to hear no, that, me okay. too I, well i'm <laughs> i'm a lefroy lover too so yeah my job is to say not to change lefroy my job is not to do that at all my job is to keep lefroy consistent and to try and get it to as many people as possible uh, but not compromising what we do mm -hmm. good so then we have the yeah, the 21. 21. So, so the 21 is, uh, was only released in uh, 35 CLs, uh, mainly for, for a couple of reasons, to try and get twice the amount of bottles into people's hands uh, and also to keep the price point in the UK below £100, so probably about 100, what, 130 euros, something yeah, like that. Yeah, something like that. So we're trying to keep it uh, there. It's a cash strength whiskey, it's 48.4% alcohol. Now... We were talking about wolf in sheep's clothing. <laughs> this is a wolf in sheep's clothing. Okay. When you know this one, you almost think, where's the Lefroy? Oh, there's honey. Yeah, absolutely. Honey's straight uh, away. But it's very straightforward honey. Yeah, but like not, no peatiness. It's like a I have to sweet say. t-shirt. No, no peatiness at all on this one. On the nose, no peat. You just get honey, sweet, maybe heathery. Is that seriously a Lefroy? It's, no, it's, well, on the nose it's not. Nothing like it. <laughs> Nothing like it. Nothing like it. That's what I love about this one. It's it's full. You can you can get the age. You can get the intensity. There's some refill casks in this one and some first fill casks. If, uh, if I would smell that, I would rather go for bourbon. 
I have yeah. to say. Yeah. You have the, the honey. Yeah. The no, vanilla. it's it's very much like it's it's like probably a, like a Highland single malt. Yeah, yeah, or like a Highland single yeah. malt. Yeah. 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 So Island the good news Island. is when you taste it, it's going to be very, very. It's got to be Lebrun. So, yeah. So it's large. It's large. No good. Ah. <laughs> So you do get that honey, but then straight away you realise, oh, something different about this. You do get that band of spiciness. Oh, the saltiness is there, the licorice root, the peat. The balance is amazing in this liquid. Mm. The more your tongue is engaged at all it's, different levels. You've got sweet, salty, spicy, smoky. It's like like with a 15 year old have that peat, but it's a bit more subtle. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It, it rounds off the edges. No, absolutely. So, mm, yeah. Really but the, like the, the whole, and it, this one will last and last and last. This one will finish probably tomorrow afternoon. It's <laughs> six o'clock <laughs> of the night. So, yeah. Yeah, I really like that. Because it's completely, no, uh, nose to, to palate, completely different. Mm. Mm. I just can't nail down the fruitiness or the yeah, no, flavours. So when you go into the 20s with Lafroy, it goes mm. from like apricots and pears and red fruits. You start to get tropical fruits coming through. So you might mm. you might very well get some, like I've seen pineapples, uh, like kind of stewed tropical fruits, maybe mangoes coming through. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's, it's a different fruitiness. Yeah, no, absolutely. So it's a kind of rich, a... creamy fruitiness, a heavy, a heavier kind of style of fruitiness coming through. Is this more heavy on the on the sherry casks? Or no, no, no sherries in this one at all. No sherries at all? No, and a lot of people think that with Lefroig's as well, when, <laughs> but it just naturally happens with older Lefroig's. Because the fruitiness is there in the new spirit, mm -hmm. it, it takes a while, the peatiness wins, and Lefroig follows a, a, a profile where the, the, the saltiness isn't there till about six years old, and then the peatiness dominates up until about 12, and then 13 to kind of 18, 19, you get this kind of mangoes, apricot, not mangoes, you get apricots, you get pears, you get a cereal note coming through in the Lefroids. And then when you get older into the 20s, you get tropical fruits coming through. Uh, you start to get maybe chocolatey flavours coming through, all these different things. And I would say that's the evolution. But the, the, the licorice root at the back of your tongue or that feeling of bitter dark chocolate, that lets you know the peatiness is all still there and it is a Lefroig. And it's pulling things together. Mm -hmm. I like it how it's smooth and peaty. Yeah, and because it's cast of, often you have a, a bit of a more of a harsher spirit and a bit more of adventure going around and and you know, like the cask oils flavors pull it all together as well. Forty eight percent alcohol. This is really brown. Twenty one years. We've got some refills in there too, so that's why mm -hmm. the refills are important because it still gives you the Freud uh, DNA and that real kind of peaty powder on the palate, but on the nose, the the first fall bourbons are definitely winning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so we're through. So thank you for having us. No, you're very welcome. Thanks for coming along. And Thanks for letting us go around on the whole distillery and showing it to our Well, people. no, Lefroig's a great thing, and the more people that understand that, the better. That's part of my job too, to try and promote Lefroig, the brand, our mm -hmm. philosophy, and thanks very much for your support. Yeah, so um, thanks for watching. And if you have any uh, friends that might be interested in this video, then please share this video with your friends. And thank you for watching.